news. How is the little chap this morning? Distressingly willful, sir. Oh, well, we must look on the bright side, Jeeves. We must think of the untold goose we have done ourselves by nannying the beast until Aunt Agatha has finished her inspection of the continent. True, sir. Um, pardon me for asking, sir, but are you proposing to appear in public in those garments? <laughs> well, certainly, Jeeves. But, uh, a bit vivid, do you think? Not necessarily, sir. I'm told that Mr. Freddy, he's a riot flower dew, often appears on the music hall stage in comparable attire. But no, 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 no buts, Jeeves. I happen to think very highly of them. Now then, yes, we must be making tracks. I tee off at 11.30. Good luck today, sir. Oh, thank you, Jarvis. Yes, Jeeves, I rather think that today you will be proud to see the young master sail through to the quarterfinals, at the very least, of the Drones Club annual knockout golf tournament. Oh, this is indeed good news, sir. You see, Jeeves, my match is against Barney Fungi Phipps. Being drawn against him is generally considered to be the golfing equivalent of a walkover. I see, sir. I hope Bobby Wickham will be amazed at my exploits on the golf course today, too, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. May I inquire as to why you are so desirous of impressing Miss Wickham? Didn't I tell you, Jeeves? I'm in love. With Miss Wickham, sir? There's no need to say it like that, Jeeves. You're wrong about Miss Wickham, you know. If you say so, sir. Right, Jeeves, this is the time for plain speaking. Just what exactly is your kick against Miss Wickham? I insist. Uh, well, sir, although Miss Wickham is a very charming young lady... Exactly, Jeeves. You speak an imperial court. What eyes. Yes, sir. What hair. Very true, sir. What luckiness. Precisely, sir. What exactly do you mean, precisely, sir? Oh, well, sir, it is that very quality of espialerie which, to my mind, debars Miss Wickham from being a matrimonial prospect for a gentleman of your description. And what do you mean, a gentleman of my description? Miss Wickham, in my opinion, sir, is too frivolous. Whenever I see Miss Wickham, I know that trouble cannot be far behind. In order to qualify as Miss Wickham's husband, a gentleman should be possessed of a commanding personality and considerable strength of character. Exactly, Jeeves! Condemned out of your own mouth. What oh, Bobby? Barmy? Hello. Hello, Bertie. Didn't know you'd arrived. Well, I hadn't. Until uh, now, of course. <laughs> I didn't arrive somewhere once. Most extraordinary thing. Are you in mourning for someone? Yes, Bertie? rather, rather natty, eh? Jeeves doesn't like them, but then, of course, Jeeves is notoriously hidebound in the matter of legwear. I was on my way there, and something happened. I can't remember what exactly. Well, you'll look after the hound, won't you, Bobby? Of course, Bertie. Oh, right, looking forward to the match, Bobby? I'll say. I've got this wonderful new gadget from Lily White. You wind it up and clip it onto your club, and it buzzes to tell you when to start your downswing. Barmy. No, it's this what's it. Thank you, George. Works marvellously, it's don't you very think? Very good, yes. <coughs> Macintosh, quiet. <coughs> Macintosh. Sorry, Bertie. <coughs> Right, now, what I'm going to do here, Jeeves, is just keep it low, drill it straight out through the trees, quail high. Indeed, sir. And then dogleg it round the wood and let it drift onto the green with just enough backspin to bring it up level with the pin. It might, might even plop straight into the hole, Jeeves. That would seem to be ideal, sir. Well, it's finesse, you know. Aptly put, sir. Oh, 
drop on it. Come here, Macintosh. Perhaps we are not keeping our eye on the ball with sufficient assiduity, sir. It's that blasted dog, James. Every time I look at the ball, it starts yapping. Good dog, Macintosh. Good dog. Good shot, Bertie. Thank you, Barney. Ah, ah. Oi! You ask me, Jeeves, that animal is in the pay of the Fungi Fipses. There you are, Jeeves. The old touch coming back. Shall I put you down for a 12 there, sir? No! No! Nothing can make me disclose my secret. You have to tell us, Mother. Who is Oriana's father? Never! Yes, yes, who is my father? Do you think I can go on living with this hanging over me? It's a living hell! I tell you. Don't he say nothing, Mrs. Warminster. What the devil has it got to do with you? Old Elias. Well, hello, Lady Wickham. Hello, Sir Cuthbert. Hello, Tuppy. How are you, young man? I hear you made a dog's breakfast of your goth this morning. Oh, he was an absolute scream. Thank you, Bobby. I shall do my best to be the game and popular loser. Don't be such a stick, Bertie. It was fun. Goth isn't intended to be fun, Roberta. We're just reading my new play, Mr. Worcester. Would you care to join us? Uh, no, thank you. I've got to take the hound for a walk. I'll come with you. Oh, Bobby, who's going to read Oriana? Won't be long. Could you read Oriana, Mr. Glossop? Oh, right, yes. Um, what the devil has it got to do with you, old Elias? He knows. He must know. How does he know? Mayhap but to lose like that to Barney of all people. They nearly died laughing in the refreshment tent. It's no laughing matter, young Bobby. No, no, I know, Bertie. But I've got an idea. I warn you that what I'm about to say, Jeeves, is going to make you look pretty silly. Indeed, sir. This morning, if I remember rightly, you stated that Miss Wickham was uh, frivolous, volatile and generally lacking in seriousness, am I correct? Quite correct, sir. Yes, well, this afternoon I went for a walk with Miss Wickham, and she has suggested to me the ripest, brainiest scheme for getting back at young Barmy that anyone could possibly imagine. Getting back at him, sir? Mm. <clears throat> one wonders if this is quite the sporting spirit. Eh? One merely wonders, sir. No, 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 this is the Worcester spirit, Jeeves. Unsporting would be me reporting that blasted buzzer thing to the committee, no. This is strictly man to man. Very good, sir. Anyway, it appears that at the school where Miss Wickham was educated, it was from time to time necessary for the right-thinking element to slip one over certain of the baser sort. <laughs> Do you know what they did, Jeeves? No, sir, I don't. No, well, they used to take a long stick, and follow me closely here, Jeeves, they used to attach a darning needle to it. And then at dead of night, they would sneak privily into the party of the second part's cubicle, and they would poke the needle through the bedclothes and puncture the water bottle. <laughs> oh, girls are so much subtler in these matters than boys, Jeeves. I'm sure you must be right, sir. Mm. And this, this is the girl that you call frivolous. Yes, sir, I do believe... Well, anyone who could think up a wheeze like that is my idea of a helpmeet. Now, have you any idea where young Barmy sleeps? I believe he is currently installed in the Motrum, sir. <laughs>
Jeeves. Yes, sir? You couldn't get me a darny needle, could you? And a bit of stick and some string. <laughs> you were wonderful, wonderful. It reminds us of old the country. <laughs> My wife does not like to be reminded of old the country. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Bellinger. Sir Cuthbert and I are so starved of true culture, buried down here in the country. <laughs> too kind with you. Damn fine. June, you can hum, uh, tap your foot to, or whistle. Uh, well, that's absolutely... Well, it's absolutely... <laughs> uh, Miss Bellinger, when you were last at La Scala, what was it you said? What do you think, Bertie? Well, absolutely. What a wonderful noise she makes. It's quite amazing. You know, I've only known her a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in love, Bertie. Oh, steady the buffs. Whenever my wife thinks of Barmania, she weeps every time. <laughs> I know, Professor Clutch. Wasn't she wonderful? <laughs> was good times in all the country. At the university, I was professor of Slavonic languages. <laughs> but we leave all behind. Our house in Stanislaus Avenue. Our party car in the countryside. Civil children. Uh, dashed awkward. No, 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 no. He's better here. Barmania is dumped. <laughs> Oh, you were wonderful, darling. <laughs> I mean, as far as I can see, the trick in playing the piano is to get one hand to do one thing while the other one's doing something else. Well, Well, I yes. mean, I can do that with a knife and fork. So I don't see uh, yes, why I Yes, but Mr. Fungi Phipps... Uh, uh, good night, Lady Wickham. Oh, good night, Mr. Worcester. I do hope you'll be quite comfortable. Oh, I'm sure I will. Uh, good night, Barmy. Good night. Sleep well. Uh, good night, all.
Are you mad or what, Matt? Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, hmm, I thought you were Barmy. You thought I am Barmy? Vladimir, the bed is wet here. Look. Well, um, it was a joke, you see. Where is your room, my lunatic? Mine? Um, well, it's just above yours, the clock room. Thank you. We will find it. Put on your robe, Anetta. Turn your back, lunatic. We will spend the finish of the night in your bed. You may sleep here. Come, Anata. Oh, no, but... Um... Jeeves, you have blundered grievously. Sir? Barmy was not sleeping in this room. This was Professor Cludge and his wife. <coughs> yes, sir. Mr. Fungi Phipps was good enough to exchange rooms with them yesterday evening after Madame Cludge complained that their room reminded her of her homeland, sir. Oh. And when did you discover this? Uh, late last night, sir. Late last night? And you cold-bloodedly stood by and let me walk to my certain doom? Yes, sir. I thought that on reflection you might prefer that your relationship with the Wickham family uh, remained a distant one. A distant one? I'm about to propose to the daughter of the house this very a.m. Very good, sir. <clears throat> Shall I lay out our hound's tooth check suit, sir, for the journey? What journey? To London, sir. Lady Wickham has already asked Mr. Fungi Phipps to leave. Asked him to leave? During the night, sir, when Professor and Madame Cludge were occupying your bed, he entered their room and pierced their hot water bottle with a sharp implement. What an extraordinary coincidence, Jeeves. Barmy getting the same idea as I did. The concatenation of circumstance you describe was not entirely unforeseen, sir. It appears that he received the suggestion from the young lady. From Miss Wickham? Yes, sir. You mean, at the same time that she was putting me up to the scheme of puncturing Barmy's hot water bottle, she was tipping Barmy off to puncturing mine? <coughs> She's a young lady with a keen sense of humour, sir. <sighs> You're cold, sir? Just shivering, Jeeves. The occurrence, if I may take the liberty of saying so, sir, may perhaps lend colour to the view which I put forward yesterday, that Miss Wickham, though in many respects a very charming young lady... Say no more, Jeeves. Love is dead. Very good, sir. Yeah. Now there's a good ship, HMS Cock Robin on a home trip. Up and down she's bobbing, oh the crew's pretty tough, the sea is so rough. They're all fed up and say that they've had more than enough. We've got a brother, he's an able seaman and they call him Redhead Tom. I want to say I'll meet you, and with your friends I'll treat you, so who do you think I've had a message from? Do you like that song, Jeeves? Well, sir, it's called 47 Ginger-Headed Sailors, Jeeves. It's all the rage with the drones at the moment. I can't say that I'm surprised to hear that, sir. 47 Ginger-Headed Sailors Coming home across the briny sea When the anchor's weighed and the journey's made Yes, they'll stop the party with a heave homey hearty 47 ginger-headed sailors You can bet you're going to hear them when they hail us An old maid down in Devon said my idea of heaven Is 47 ginger-headed sailors Really speaks to me, that song, you know, Jeeves? I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Would you like to hear the rest of it? I shouldn't like to put you to any trouble, sir. This note was delivered for you by hand a few moments ago. Oh. Well, at least Mackintosh likes my singing. You know, I'm really going to miss the little fellow when Aunt Agatha gets back today. Well, of all the bally nerve, Jeeves. Sir? After everything she did to us last weekend, and she wants us to give her lunch today. Sir? Miss Wickham, Jeeves, and two of her friends. She even specifies the menu. Ugh. Indeed, sir. Roly-poly pudding with lots of jam, oysters, ice cream and plenty of chocolate. Must be on some kind of diet. 
Well, I shall have to go and remonstrate with her, Jeeves. Very good, sir. I shall go and purchase the comestibles. Oh, by no means, Jeeves. By no means. I can be chilled still, you know. Now, Bobby, after everything you've done to me, I just don't see how you have the, the almighty gall. Oh, don't be such a stick, Bertie. It's all right about lunch, is it? <laughs> no, it dashed well is not all right. Oh, Bertie, I can't give Mr. Blumenfield lunch here. Look, the house is being decorated. Oh, restaurants are open. I never thought you were small-minded, Bertie. Careful of those mouldings, George. Hmm? Small-minded? Mr. Blumenfield's a fearfully important Broadway producer. I've got to read Mummy's play to him after lunch. I can't read him in a restaurant. Yes, but Bruce, why does he want jam, roly-poly and oysters? Well, he doesn't. That's for his son. Apparently, Mr. Blumenfield always banks on his verdict. He says an eight-year-old child's intelligence is exactly equal to a Broadway audience's. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm not going to sit around all afternoon while you read your mother's dratted play. Well, you going to have lunch at the club, then? No, no, no. Oh, Bertie, you're such a dear. Help me, Brandon. He's armed. Don't he come nigh me, young sir. You cur. Oh. If you don't take your hands off that young woman. <clears throat> what then? What'll he do Daddy? to old Elias? Happen he'll take thy riding crop to him, like the old maester Daddy. thy father be used to do? Daddy, the duck's so cute, isn't he? Don't you like the play, son? Huh? Sure, I like it fine, but the dog's cuter. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the opera tonight. The opera, Toppy? Chorusing in the, um, Barbara Figaro. Is that the one about the pyramids? Sounds like it, by the name. I've never been to the opera before. Would you like to come with me, Bertie? Uh, well, excuse me, sir. There's a Miss Wickham for you on the phone. Well, righto. Yes? Bobby! Yes, good. You've done what? But, but why? She'll kill me! Jeeves? I couldn't stop her, sir. Do you mean to say that you, you stood by and allowed Bobby Wickham make a present of my Aunt Agatha's dog to some perfect stranger, Jeeves? You know how headstrong a young lady she can be, sir. Well, is she mad? The child took a fancy to the animal, sir, and in order to ingratiate herself to the boy's father, she presented it to him. Well, I'm, I'm lost, Jeeves. Sunk! Aunt Agatha is due here at six o'clock. If I might propose a course of action, sir? Well, anything, Jeeves. Anything. Mr. Blumenfield and the young gentleman are attending a motion picture performance this afternoon, sir. They will not return to their hotel until five o'clock, at which time Miss Wickham will call on them to sign the contract for Lady Wickham's play. Should they be delayed, she is to go straight up to their suite and attend them. Well, I don't see how that helps us, Jeeves. If you will bear with me, sir, our first requirement is for aniseed. Aniseed? to sprinkle on the trousers, sir. Aniseed is commonly and extensively used in the dog napping industry. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh yes, indeed, sir. Oi, come out of there! Oi! Now, sir, you know how much the dog Macintosh enjoys your singing? It's all right, it's the trousers, sir. Seven ginger-headed sailors You can bet you're going to hear them when they hail us And when they step ashore They'll be a patron From forty-seven ginger-headed sailors
breeze, Jeeves, like a breeze. Now, put the pooch somewhere where my trousers will cease to cast their spell. Tell me, Jeeves, were you always like this, or did it come on suddenly? Sir? The brain, the grey matter. Were you an outstandingly brilliant child? My mother thought me intelligent, sir. Well, can't go by that. My mother thought me intelligent. Who, who is that, James? Probably Mr. Blumenfield Sr., sir. What? He telephoned a short while ago to say that he was about to pay you a call, sir. Well, oh, great stop, James. Get, get rid of him. I'll see what I can do, is it? Right. This guy Wooster, where is he? I could not say, sir. He sneaked my son's dog. Most disturbing, sir. You don't know where he is? My boy has his heart set on that little dog. If he doesn't get it back, he's going to turn right against that play. What's that smell in here? Um, aniseed, I suspect, sir. Mr. Wooster likes to sprinkle it on his trousers. What the hell does he do that for? I could not say, sir. Mr. Worcester is an eccentric. You mean he's a loony? Yes, sir. Not, uh, dangerous? Yes, sir. With regard to the aniseed, sir, I fancy I have now located it. Unless I am very much mistaken, it's proceeding from behind this sofa. No doubt Mr. Worcester is sleeping there. Doing what? Sleeping, sir. Oh, my God. Would you like me to wake him up, sir? <laughs> no, no. Just get me out of here alive. That's all I ask. Very good, sir. But I think I can do better than that. Hey! Here's a five-pound note. Thank you very much indeed, <laughs> sir. Oh, there this way, more. sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Blumenfield. I can't believe it. No, sir. Mr. Wooster, sir. The Astor Hotel. You know where that is, buddy? Aunt Agatha? Oh, no, uh, 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 Aunt Agatha, you can't go up to the flat. Why? I trust Macintosh as well. No, he isn't. Uh, well, yes, Macintosh is fine. I'm coming in the lift. Uh, no. Uh, but no, but you can't go up there. No, no. Uh, no, you, nobody can. Your mouth is hanging open again, Bertie. Hi. Ah, there he is. Come to Mother Macintosh. How's my baby then? <laughs> mouth closed, Bertie. But Jeeves, I... I'm sure Master Blumenfield Jr. will not detect the fact that I purchased another dog, sir. Another dog? Except to the eye of love, sir, one Aberdeen Terrier is much like another. I had a 
special reason. It's actually wonderful at the loud bits. Oh, oh yes. 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 <laughs> Look, um, the thing is, Bertie, what with her great soul and everything, she has this rather serious outlook on life. I want you to back me up, let her know I've got a serious mind and so forth. Didn't know you had any sort of a mind. <laughs> That is just the sort of remark we don't want, thank you very much. Well, I suppose we could better get backstage and uh, meet her. <laughs> oh, I think it's more opera first. Surely not. Oh, yes, that was only act one. Well, how many are there? Four. Good God! But, well, it's wonderful. Super. <laughs> what a treat. Yes, well done. <laughs> ah. Who is it? It's Hildebrand, darling. One moment, Hildebrand. Hildebrand? Just shut up. Gentlemen. Hello, Cora. You remember Bertie of Worcester? Oh, hello, Cora. Good evening, Mr. Worcester. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <clears throat> Topping show. Why, thank you. I did not know you were a devotee of the opera, Mr. Worcester. Uh, well, um, I saw Naughty Naughty at the Hippodrome last year. It was... Did you really? Hildebrand, I should be grateful if you do not smoke a cigar in my dressing room. Oh. Thank <coughs> you. Serious-minded old Tuppy. I beg your pardon? Tuppy. Serious-minded. Oh, Lord, yes. Indeed? Mm, famous for it. I often say to him, you know, when we're at the races or shifting a few at the truck, I say to him, Tuppy, old fellow, you are serious-minded, aren't you? Mm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, that went pretty well, I thought. Mm. But how are you going to keep it up, Tuppy? I have my long-term strategy, Bertie. You remember Beefy Bingham? Yes, I ran into him the other day. He's a parson now. Yes, quite. Down in the East End. Well, the thing is, Cora's frightfully keen on good works. So I've been helping Beefy out at the lads' club. He runs down there for the local toughs. Well, you know, the sort of thing. Coco and cribbage in the reading room and whatnot. Yes, I wonder where you've been getting to. What's more, Cora's promised to sing at Beefy's next entertainment. And, mark my devilish ingenuity, Bertie, I'm going to sing too. And how is that going to get you anywhere? Because I intend to sing a song which will prove to her once and for all that there are great deeps in my nature. Well, I'm not going to sing one of your mouldy old comic songs. I'm going to sing about angels being lonely and, well, all that kind of stuff. Angels being lonely? You're not going to sing Sunny Boy? I jolly well am. The angels grew lonely. It took you because they were lonely. Now I'm lonely too. I can't be responsible for Tuppy's affairs of the heart. You may be my favourite nephew. But Aunt Dahlia... But he is your friend, Bertie. Up until about three weeks ago, that blasted glossop was all over my daughter. Haunting the house, lapping up daily lunches, dancing with her half the night and so on. Well, naturally, the poor kid imagined that it was only a question of time before he suggested they should feed for life out of the same bucket. And now he's gone and dropped Angela like a hot brick. And I hear he's infatuated with some singer. Hmm. Cora Bellinger. How do you know? I've met her. What's she like? But on the lines of the Albert Hall. I want this Bellinger business broken up, Bertie. A little thing like this should be child's play to Jeeves, <clears throat> from all I hear. From what Mr. Worcester has told me of the lady, I believe that should Miss Bellinger witness Mr. Glossop appearing to disadvantage in public, she would cease to entertain affection for him. In the event, for example, of his failing to please the audience on Tuesday with his singing. By Jove, you mean, if he gets the bird, all will be off? 
I should be greatly surprised if this were not the case, sir. Yeah, but we cannot leave this thing to chance, Jeeves. We need not leave it entirely to luck, sir. If Mr. Glossop were to sing Sunny Boy directly after you too, sir, had sung Sunny Boy, I fancy the audience would have lost their taste for that particular song and would respond warmly, I'm sure. Jeeves, you are a marvel. Thank you, madam. Jeeves, you are an ass. Me sing Sunny Boy at one of Beefy Bingham's entertainments. <laughs> Mr. Worcester has a pleasant light baritone, Mrs. Travers. He often uses it about the flat. Bertie, you'll sing it and like it. England, England, England. It's that time you are Where the daring come? I can't explode or torrid strands. Like heroes, play their part. England, England, England. Not a large gathering, sir, but enthusiastically partisan. Oh, you here, Jeeves? Oh, indeed, sir. I've been present since the commencement. Any casualties yet? Oh, no, sir. Mm, so I'll be the first, will I? By no means, sir. I anticipate that you will be well received. Do you suppose for one moment, when Tuppy Glossop hears me sing that dashed song, he'll just stroll on a moment later and sing it too? Mr. Glossop will not hear you sing, sir. Eh? <clears throat> At my advice, he has stepped across the road to the dog and duck, and he intends to remain there until it's time for him to appear on the platform. Oh. the world repeats. Thank you, Mr. Simpson, thank you. And now, an old friend of mine who's here to entertain us, Mr. Bertie Worcester. Upon my knees, sunny boy. You are only three, sunny boy. You've no way of knowing, I've no way of showing what you mean to me, sunny boy. But don't where there are gray skies, I don't mind those. You are only da 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 la 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 Time, Mr. Gossip. Thank you, Jeeves. Someone who's become very familiar to us at the cribbage board over the past few weeks, but tonight he's going to sing for us, Mr. Hildebrand Glossop. <laughs> Mr. Glossop has also helped us with the ping pong. 
most professionally performed, if I may say so, sir. You may, Jeeves, you may. Mind you, the bird was definitely hovering in the air. I could feel the beating of its wings. I fancy the audience may have lost their taste for this particular melody, sir. Eh? I should perhaps have mentioned it earlier, sir, uh, but the song was performed twice before you arrived. Do you mean to tell me, Jeeves, that you deliberately... I think Mr. Glossop is about to begin, sir. I think we may definitely consider the Glossop Bellinger romance off. Oh, you're right. Now, the, the next item on the program was to have been songs by Miss Cora Bellinger, the well-known operatic soprano. Now, I've just received a telephone message from Miss Bellinger saying that her car has broken down. Now, she is, however, on her way in a cab and will arrive shortly. Now, in the meantime, perhaps our old friend, Mr. Enoch Simpson... Jeeves, she wasn't even here. And <coughs> so it would seem, so. So she never saw Tuppy's Waterloo. This whole agony has been for nothing. Most unfortunate, sir. Well, I'm going home, Jeeves. Never, never, never involve me in one of your schemes again. Very good, sir. <clears throat> With your permission, sir, I would like to witness the remainder of the entertainment. No, rather you than me, Jeeves. Personally, my heart has turned to stone. May I? Mr. Jeeves. Good evening, madam. waiting for, I'm sure you'll agree, Miss Cora Bellinger. Jeeves, I had one of the rummiest phone calls in a lifetime of rummy phone calls last night. Indeed, sir. From my Aunt Dahlia. She told me that Tuppy was there with Angela and that all was over between him and Miss Bellinger. I confess that I had anticipated some such eventualities, sir. Eh? The thought came to me when I observed Miss Bellinger strike Mr. Glossop in the eye, sir. 
What on earth did she do that for? I fancy she was upset, sir, at the vigour with which the audience expressed their disapproval of her choice of song. Now, Jeeves, <laughs> you're not going to tell me that Miss Bellinger sang Sunny Boy too? Yes, Sam. Well, what an extraordinary coincidence. Uh, not entirely, sir. I took the liberty of accosting Miss Bellinger on her arrival at the hall and saying that Mr. Glossop had requested that she sing Sunny Boy as a particular favour to him, sir. I say, Jeeves. Precisely, sir. She supposed that she had been the victim of a practical pleasantry by Mr. Glossop. She took it hard, sir. Good heavens, Jeeves. Shall I run your bath, sir? Thank you, Jeeves, yes. Oh, Jeeves. Yes, sir? Those plus sixes, Jeeves. Get rid of them, will you? Thank you, sir. It will be a wrench at first, but you'll feel better for it. 